Hey guys, this is Neon. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're actually going to do another Star Wars video. We haven't done a lot of these lately because, frankly, I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah. Um, but I think I've, I care more than you do. Yeah, I've completely run out of give a shit for Star Wars. Like, I watched uh, part of Resistance the other night, and people said it actually wasn't that bad. No, they said it gets better. A couple yeah. episodes in, they said it does improve. So I'm like, I don't know if I can actually bring myself to watch it. I really, I don't really care that much anymore. I'm so tired of hearing about Star Wars, talking about Star Wars, but here we are talking about uh, Episode Nine. Well, yeah, and, this um, hit, this story hit, and everybody's talking about it, so we figure, hey, why not? Let's just do what everybody else is doing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but so put our you... own personal rants, our own that's right. uh, sort of uh, fragrance um, on. Is that what you're calling it? it? I'm going to call it my 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 fragrance. Yes. Why? What about my fragrance? I don't know. What is your fragrance, Geeky? You tell me. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go there. That's called I'm not going to say anything. Um, okay, so Oscar <laughs> Isaac, this is on Collider. Originally, it was posted on IndieWire. Geeky said the IndieWire article was a big, fat mess. No, it wasn't a big, fat mess. It was just very rambly and talking about several projects he's working on right now. So it was you have to dig, dig, dig to find stuff. I just didn't care enough to do that. No, so we're just going to get the uh, Cliff Notes version of it here. Oscar Isaac, Star Wars Episode Nine has more improvisation than The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens. Actually, the, I didn't feel like there was any improv really in, it was in very either uptight. one of those movies. Yeah, they were. Uh, well, there was improv in the original. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. Some of the best, of the best lines, lines yeah. yeah, were improv. So, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But go ahead. Okay, so this is coming from uh, Vinny Mancuso on Collider. Making a Star Wars movie can't be easy. Besides those bajillion dollar budgets and Death Star size productions, the pressure is tremendous. There's a legion, I, I like this here. There's a legion of diehards and lifers waiting with lightsabers sharpened to let you know it as evidenced by the decidedly unchill reaction to Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. Well, it was unchill because it wasn't good. And then, you know, you couldn't take any criticism without having to slap people down. And I still want to know what lifers mean. Because diehards <laughs> and lifers, apparently they're two different I, things. Yeah. But like I was saying to Neon before, it's like around here when you hear the term lifers, that usually refers to people on welfare. But that's around here. <laughs> anyway. A galaxy far, far away. But according to Oscar Isaac, who played hotshot flyboy Poe Dameron in both Last Jedi and J.J. Abrams, The Force Awakens filming on the trilogy capping episode 9, and apparently saga capping as I understand it, has been a breeze with returning Abrams encouraging more improvisation. Okay. Um, that could be a good thing or bad thing. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> I mean, I think they might be, you know, flying, flying casual. Flying in, casual. In this oh, one. no, fly casual. But I'm also like, you know, this is episode nine. If this is actually the last episode of the saga, which I've heard uh, multiple times, this is going to be the end of the Skywalker saga, you think they would have a, a plan? Well, I think it's <laughs> you know, funny. You think they have a plan in place? I mean, I guess because because of Kylo Ren's Ben, but I, I mean, I just think it's funny because it's the end of the Skywalker saga, as we make sure that you know that none of these people are, you know, except for Ben, having to do with Skywalkers. Yeah. The like, Skywalker saga, we're trying to get away from the Skywalkers on. Yeah, that was just uh, bad. I, I don't know. This whole trilogy has just been a mess. I mean, I personally, I'm like, why did you just keep J.J. Abrams on for all three movies so at least they were consistent? Yeah. Uh, you know, instead of trying to get a different director, like, yeah, they did in the original trilogy because, yeah, they were kind of making it up as they went along, but... It was the start of it. It wasn't like... Right. They, they yeah, there wasn't... In, in a company like Disney, a company like Lucasfilm and... and you know, the 2000s, you would think they'd be able to sit down for a day and just get some some sticky notes and, and you know, plot notes. this thing out. So you know, do. three movies. I mean, that's not... Okay, let's see what he not says. Not rocket science. So, speaking What's to IndieWire about his upcoming year-long break from act acting, uh, uh, Isaac described the feelings on set as looser, with an emphasis on taking off-book risks. Oh, boy. The way they've been shooting it right now is looser than it's been in the last two times. It does feel like a relief to get on set and feel like, oh, we can try things. It's a testament to JJ coming back and feeling confident. There's less pressure for it to be right. Yeah, that's worrisome, isn't it? <laughs> There's less pressure for it to be right. I mean, it, they, I guess they thought it was right last time. I don't know. Um, we just want to make a good movie and have a really good time while doing it. Now, here's the thing. All the photos we saw of the cast with Ryan Johnson. I was going to mention that. I was going to mention that picture. They did not look like they're having a good time. No, I love that picture where he's like looking like he's amused and they're looking at him like side eye, like what's wrong with you? That is like the best picture ever. Yeah, it was like Ryan Johnson it was living in his own little world and I don't think he, I, I don't know, if you kind of read between the lines, it sounds like Oscar Isaac is like, thank God JJ's coming back. 
It does you sound know, like, it does uh, sound like that. Because Ryan Johnson was a pain in the ass to work for. I, I mean, exactly. I could, I wonder. I wonder yeah. if he was like, you have to do it this way exactly on the 30th take. You better get it right. And you better be true to every word I wrote. Right. Because they did seem like they weren't, like, it didn't seem like, it didn't seem like as much fun as the first. I mean, I don't like either. But the first one did feel like looser. And it did feel like, like people seemed to want to be there a little bit more than the second yeah, one. Yeah, there, there was an excitement. I mean, The Force Awakens, you know, say what you will about the sequel trilogy. And the fact that it was, it was derivative of uh you know the original star wars movie which was the biggest problem you know geeky had with it um and there were major plot holes but it was still a fun movie i mean i i actually can watch well strike that i could watch the force awakens again now that i know where these characters go um i'm less inclined to watch it again because i'm like well i've had the questions answered poorly or not answered at all or the characters become complete dicks yeah. You know, um, and I felt they had missed opportunity because yeah, I don't think, totally I don't think it's fair, you know, to punish, you know, him because his character, I think Poe was a great character. Yeah, he Poe, was a great character. First, and I think, first film, he was awesome. And he I think was, Finn was, was also a really good character. And they kind of, what they did, they, what they established them as in the, in the first one, they turned around and just completely undid them, took away the redeeming qualities completely because you, to make you not like them so they could use them as a step, in, as literally a step to raise the women characters up higher because, you know, they, they had to somehow belittle these guys to make the women more important. And yeah. they did. They yeah, really like did. Yeah, like Holdo, who just saunters in, never mentioned before. But now he's got to be a dick and, and question her authority. So she can use him as a punching bag and make an example of him. Yeah, I'm but like, that's okay because what? she sacrifices her, herself to, to, to learn him what real love and, and, and true power and leadership <laughs> is. God. And it's like, you know, they really did this. And, and and Finn, he was like flipping hero at the end. I mean, he even tried to pick up a lightsaber and do something with it, even yeah. though it got his ass kicked. And then they undo that because he was going to run away. And, you know, oh, but that's God, okay. That yeah. Rose, you know. Rose was there to set him just, straight. So, and, then, and then when he wanted to sacrifice himself to save everyone, which was his choice, she was there to make sure that he didn't do that. And so lots of people could die. Because she was because, selfish. Because love. <laughs> yeah, she, she was, was yeah, selfish. kinda because she didn't want to lose him because she, she loved him. Yeah, you know, but ne- never mind that if, you know, uh they don't defeat the bad guys, they're gonna kill everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, That's kinda pretty much it is, know. yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm a woman saying this. And I think Finn's actually I mean, we're going off on a tangent here, but like Finn's story arc, God, it irritated me so because the whole The Force Awakens, I mean, he basically was the co lead with Ray. Yeah. And his whole storyline was, you know, he he goes from being a a, a coward to a hero and they completely undo it within the first couple minutes of the last Jedi. I'm like, that's just like, did you watch the first movie? Did you watch the first no, movie? Yeah, I know. I mean, I think, I think it's more to do with a director on the second movie. And it, and I didn't really think about it until we read this article, but when you think back on it, yeah, it didn't like seem like there was all those, you know, really cheesy, like dumb and dumber type jokes in there. I mean, honestly, it felt more like that than star Wars, but people weren't like really like, they were like fake smiling when they were delivering them. They didn't seem as into it as the first one. Yeah. And you see the uh, interviews where they have, you know, cast members like, you know, Mark Hamill sitting down with Ryan Johnson and they're they're just obviously they're just doing it because they're getting paid to do it. They agree to yeah. do it. They have a contract. But there's so many like especially with with Mark Hamill, so many uh, kind of backhand slaps. Right, right. You know, right. with Ryan Johnson. So I, I do think that everybody's like, oh, thank God, JJ's back. And you know, think I what you will about yeah. JJ. But of the two uh, sequel movies, The Force Awakens was infinitely. Better. better yeah um, well in our opinion people are going to tell you that you're wrong because women because we're not smart enough yes you, to, know, you know i'm the sock my, puppet account to your ma- <laughs> to your misogyny um uh okay so here we're gonna go uh, you read all that so you're at the while this might okay. worry those who are put off by the last jedi's humor as if yoda didn't whack r2d2 with a stick at empire strikes back ha 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 ha, ha. no it's different because in the yeah. last jedi they were they were making your mama jokes and he was drinking the milk like that they had the, the oh my god it, yeah. and then like r2d2 with a stick is a, is is not exact like it's apples to, to you know melons I don't know what to apples call to it. melons. <laughs> Your apples, apples not melons. Apples that to, sounds like a party to me. Apples to rotten tomatoes. I was just mm, called that. So uh, this uh, it really sounds like Isaac and the returning cast felt more comfortable in that galaxy far, far away. Could it be the director? The actor I mentioned the director. that the still yeah. entitled ninth chapter felt more alive as a result, which could be good or bad. It was yeah. The, the Last Jedi was very. I mean, you know, it was very mechanical. I mean, there were some parts in there, but even like. You know, Ray was less likable in yeah, more mechanical. Yeah, she wasn't likable at this one. Um, Luke was just, I mean, he was dour. But, I mean, you think even the characters that we liked, they, you know, in, in, in The Force Awakens were just mechanical. Right. And I think, it, again, it comes down to, 
I you know, really wonder. Go ahead. Sorry. Ryan John. I think it's. I, I, I was going to say. Yeah, I think they were not particularly happy or like you said it might be like the 30th or 40th take that's what like, i'm thinking you have to get my fan fiction right this is the way it plays out in my head that's what i'm thinking you know because if, that's what it sounds like almost i mean i don't know that i wasn't there but just from the pictures i see and how everybody looks not very comfortable around him and then you know some of the comments are made it's looser it's more fun everybody's having fun that sounds to me like there must have been something going down with the second one that wasn't fun yeah, I'm thinking, well, and then I read another article uh, a couple months ago that when Daisy Ridley found out that J.J. Abrams was coming back, she, like, burst into tears. She was so really? happy. That's pretty telling. That, yeah. I mean, it tells me that I, I honestly think, you know, obviously, they can't say anything uh, publicly about it. I mean, some of the fans have kind of come out and said this or that, but I, I really wonder if the cast didn't have a freaking miserable time, and now J.J. is back, and they're like, hey, guys, just, you know, have, make make a fun movie, and they're like, oh, my God, Really? Like, we weren't allowed to, have a, well, had to make a fun movie last time. In one of the other and articles, showed. and I'm not sure if it was the original article that he was, I think it might have even been the original article he did. They asked him about, like, he was talking about, you know, they, the backlash. And he mm. said he didn't really run into that too much for whatever reason. That he, uh, you know, he wasn't the director. He wasn't the, uh, it might have been this one. It might have been the other article I gave you. Um, he wasn't the director. He wasn't the one that had to deal with it. Yeah, there we go. He shot his backlash in a previous installment. Luckily, since I'm not directing it, producing it, or distributing it, I don't have to worry so much about, a fan, expe about fan expectations. Mm -hmm. Also, not all fans have the same expectations, which is true. Yeah. He compared the response to Star Wars The Force Awakens to the negativity that met George Lucas' prequels. People, but you know what? People didn't like the prequels so much, but the, no, it wasn't the same. Like It wasn't like, especially The Last Jedi. Like No one flipped yeah. out that bad. Um, now, Force Awakens, like, look, there are some people that really didn't like it and they felt it was redundant, but they're, yeah, you're right. The backlash uh, from The Force Awakens was nothing, nothing. Even the backlash for the prequels, the backlash for The Phantom Menace was nothing compared to The Last Jedi. Yeah, I agree. And you know? it's just, you know, because I, I think the other ones were, you know, they had issues, but people, like, they still kind of fit with everything. They were a little more talky and stuff and they had issues, but... This one just was so, like, it just didn't fit. It was like trying to ram a triangular peg into a, a circular hole, and it, it was not going to go into my Without what you did. lube. So, yes. So the only way Without could, dinner. <laughs> the only way it was going to fit was to make the hole bigger and shove it in there. Whether you wanted that hole bigger or not, you have to work on that. You can't just you gotta you gotta work it. That's what bit. I'm saying. You gotta make you gotta make the hole bigger bigger gradually. Right. Uh, as someone who's had babies. Uh, <laughs> If it, when it suddenly becomes a big hole, it's not as comfortable as you think it would be, and it's, it's not as pleasant. So you, you need to you need to work it out slowly. Okay, I just so, completely lost. So he, uh, point So my point know. is, you you you're trying to ram a, a triangular shaped movie into the circular hole that everybody else fit in, and it wasn't working. So he, but he shoved it in anywhere, and then it got wedged, and then it just caused chafing, and then it just made people mad, and then he told everybody else it was their fault. If your hole had been bigger, I wouldn't, uh, you know, and, and you had been more accepting of my, my, my triangular shape. Oh my God, if you have been more accepting and just spread a little wider and let me shove it in you know, and, uh, and, and, didn't understand. and didn't complain, um, we would have been fine. Everything would have been fine. It's all your fault, Pretty fans. Much. It's all your fault. Because, because you didn't open your hole wider so I could shove the triangular I, I shape into the hole. tried to shove it in as far as I could shove it and, and you just wouldn't have it. now it's wedged it. in there and I'm, I'm not, I'm, it's staying. Tough. <laughs> I'm just leaving it in there. It's canon now, bitches. <laughs> you know, so I'm just, I know that went really off the rails there. But, you know, I started out as an innocent enough analogy. Yeah. Well, I think, I think too, the lack of, because back when the prequels came out, they, they really only had message boards. We did not have, um, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter especially. And, oh, you know, awful. there was some backlash uh, against the prequels. People, you know, didn't like Jar Jar. But it was nothing like the backlash that we're seeing in the last gen. And I think it's because, you know, you're seeing you're seeing what kind of people actually work on these movies right. and they're expressing their opinions in public. And I think that, you know, it's, that's rubbing people the wrong way. So not only was their hole stretched out to maximum, uh, uh, wholeness, but <laughs> there was also some chafing. You don't want it to rip. Yeah. You don't want it to rip. So, um, but anyway, it's, it's interesting to see. It's interesting to see how this is, uh, going to play out again. I, I really don't care so much about uh, episode nine, but uh, it is good to hear, I guess, that they're having more fun. On so set. hopefully that comes across. Hopefully we'll it means see. a better movie. We'll so see. We're well, I'll hold my breath, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll wrap this one up. This has been Clownfish TV. Subscribe, please, for more pop culture news, views, rants, gaming videos, art videos, 
and more. And uh, check out our Patreon, patreon.com backslash clownfishtv. We're going to be ramping that up. And uh, this has been Neon and Geeky Sparkles. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>